Brethren in Christ, Lord day to Jesus Christus in sequela. This is Timothy Flanders at the Meaning of Catholic. Jesus is King. Welcome once again to the Guild Family Stream. Thank you for this new time this week. Uh, next week, I will be traveling to Pittsburgh for the CIC conference. So if anybody's in Pittsburgh, make sure to say hello. And then after that, the week of the um, October 9 through 13, I will be traveling out to Gower to make a pilgrimage to Sister Wilhelmina's relics, Gower, Missouri. Uh, so the details of that are on 1peter5.com. It says pilgrimage to Sister Wilhelmina. So that'll be some of the uh, traveling going on um, in the next few weeks. Uh, but the Guild Family Stream, we're going to be having weekly conversations about the Synod on Synodality that will be happening next month. Um, this will just be the last Guild Family Stream until uh, we begin in October. So all the happenings that will be going on in October with the Synod, that'll be, uh, we'll have a weekly discussion with our Guild community. Uh, as always, I'll release the first part of this stream to the public to invite people to join our guild family community. Uh, this is our online guild designed to help us support each other in our times, chiefly through economic means as the way that we learn how to live in a post-Christendom world, post-liberal world, to build Christendom out of our domestic church in our communities. So that's what the guild is all about. The guild supports Meaning of Catholic communitycatholic.com slash register if you want to join the guild community. So today's topic, we're going to be talking about the uh, some of the latest out of the um, the Vatican Cardinals. Uh, we, there was a very interesting um, Ladaria, uh, the uh, Ladaria who used to be the head of the doctrinal uh, watchdog, the so-called dicastery for the doctrine of the faith, Cardinal Luis Ladaria Ferrer, has pulled out of the synod at his own request. It's very interesting timing because this is one of um, Pope Francis's main allies was Ladaria before he was replaced by Tucho Healing Me With Your Mouth Fernandez. Um, so we're going to be talking about that in just a minute. And then after the public portion, we will talk about the latest about the, J, the so-called JQ. Uh, since this is still unlisted on YouTube, that part of it we'll, we'll have to talk in code because... Uh, if we talk about the JQ, it's so controversial that um, my my only hit or my only strike on YouTube was when I had an unlisted video talking about this topic. So we will be talking about this topic on unlisted YouTube, but it will be in code. So we'll talk about the JQ. If you don't if you don't know what the JQ is, um, you can join the Guild community to get the full discussion. We do have a uh, what is it? A third? I think it's a 13-part series on the JQ that's available for guild members. Um, that's dealing with all the controversial aspects of the JQ. Uh, so the topic today in the Guild Family Stream will be the JQ after the public portion. So um, second bit of news is I have signed two book deals now um, with. My book, Against Eastern Orthodoxy, that will be coming out hopefully quarter one of 2024. And that so that book is done. It's just going to go through the editing process. I have signed a, a deal with a publisher. And all of you who joined the launch team, thank you. Uh, we will still need your support when the book launches next year. And then um, the second book will be about Fatima. It'll be about Fatima and the Russian Catholic Church. And um, it'll about it'll about some of the history of the 20th century that is providential with Fatima and Russia. Uh, obviously, a very timely book, um, and that'll be out hopefully quarter one of 2025. That's the plan right now. God willing, by your prayers, um, it might be sooner, but that's what's going on right now. And then, um, yeah. So let, let's talk about um, let's talk about the latest from Rome. And as I said, we'll have our ye weekly guild stream. Guild Family Stream discussions. So we'll be talking about the latest news that will be going through um, October. First of all, I wanted to talk about 
how do we spiritually prepare for the synod and synodality? Uh, we know that these various synods have been producing various controversial things over the pontificate of Pope Francis, and it's important that we check ourselves spiritually. If we have a particular uh, temptation towards the vice of despair, if we are have some have, uh, vices of doubt in our faith, things like that, that are causing us, uh, or the news rather is causing these temptations, uh, we think about, for example, the vice of curiosity. St. Thomas talked about the vice of curiosity, which is a very interesting um, aspect or an interesting way to talk about it. The vice of curiosity is this excessive desire for knowledge, which is knowledge which is not profitable for your state in life or may even be harmful to your state in life. And this is particularly apropos when we talk about the news, and we especially Vatican scandals, especially if they're hurting your faith. Um, if, if we are chasing scandals, chasing, um, some people chase apparitions, chasing all of this knowledge because we have this vice of curiosity, it's very important that we don't let it disturb our peace. In fact, mm -hmm. let me grab uh, this text right here. Um, <clears throat> one of the most, one of my favorite texts is uh, the Spiritual Combat by, by Lorenzo Scopoli, and this this particular version includes an additional book at the end, which is called "Of Interior Peace or the Path to Paradise." And I really like what he says here. He says, Chapter One: What is the nature of our heart? How it ought to be governed. So he says this quote. The life of man is nothing else but a warfare and a continual temptation. And in consequence of this warfare, we must live in a state of watchfulness and ever keep guard over your heart so that it may continue in peace and quietness. And if you should feel the movement of some sensual disturbance within you, you must be careful to quiet it instantly, stilling your heart and not permitting it to turn aside or wander after any of these things. Do this as often as any cause of disquietude presents itself, whether in prayer or any at any other time, and know that when you have learnt to act thus, then you will have learnt to pray aright. But remember that all this must be done sweetly and gently. In short, the whole and principal business of your life must consistent, consist in continually quieting your heart and never letting it go astray. So he talks about this importance of, uh, chapter 3, he says, we must be careful not to permit anything to disturb your heart. Do not meddle with things which are likely to disquiet it. So it's important that, first of all, you know, before we go into October, whatever may happen in the Vatican, think about this. Examine your conscience. Why not do it before Holy Communion this, this, this coming Sunday tomorrow? Examine your conscience. Think about, it, you know, is this something that's really going to disturb me? Am I, is this going to frustrate me, give me anxiety, all these sorts of things? Well, just let God deal with that then let god be the governor and the provident ruler over the october synod and you can just get on with the business of saving your soul that's a great that's a great approach to the synod on synodality uh, most of our catholic forefathers never even knew about scandals that were going on in the rome and they've been going on for centuries so that's an important piece of spiritual wisdom from scopoli that we need to bring into this now, having said that, we are going to talk about some of the latest news now. So I think what's very interesting is um, the there's two cardinals in particular who are, um, well, there's Cardinal Pell, may he rest in peace. Um, he died suddenly, unfortunately, um, but he had some interesting um, things to say uh, about, against the Synod of Synodality, and he criticized it very heavily and then we have cardinal muller cardinal muller was the previous doctrinal head of the vatican and he has called the synod of synodality a hostile takeover of the faith and he's 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 speaking at the cic conference next week and so i mean this is how much more mainstream can you get the the former head of the cdf itself so this is you know, this is a very, very extreme situation, um, but we need that fear. Now, there's a very interesting development, however, is that Cardinal Ladaria 
a, he pulled out of the Senate. And this is over at Rorate Chele. You can, you can read all the sources over here. Um, where Cardinal Ladaria, and he, so he pulls out of the city. So the article says, today it was announced Cardinal Luis Ladaria Ferrer, former prefect of the Dicastery of the Doctrine of the Faith, the DDF, so-called DDF, or the um, CDF, will not be taking part in the Synod of Synodality at his own request. No other reason was given. And the author of this article, I think, makes a strong case for the context of this situation, because um, Pope Francis has just rehabilitated Father Rupnik, and this is a huge scandal. If you don't know about this, uh, Father Rupnik is um, accused and credibly accused with all sorts of abominations and sexual misdeeds and immorality. Um, and uh, Pope Francis has defended him. There's a, in fact, a, there's an article at Rorate that goes into all the gory details about that. Um, but it's very interesting because Cardinal Daria wasn't in charge of um, the CDF at a time when the CDF was really handling the um, sex abuse investigation. So the, the author says, quote, the particular timing and absence of any explanation other than it was Ladaria's own request are notable. Ladaria's last day at the DDF prefect was September 8. He was replaced on September 11 with Francis loyalist Tucho Fernandez, who has been instructed by Francis to stay away from sex abuse investigations, despite it being the chief duty of his office. And then the very next Friday is when he met with the defender of Rupnik, and then he made a statement about Rupnik. And so it certainly seems to fit that Ladaria is making a statement by not making a statement. He's being silent. You know, if he had a, a good reason for not per per participating in the Pope's pet project, he would say it. He would say, uh, my health is failing. Um, I X, Y, Z, you know, he would have a good excuse. But I think the fact that he's not saying anything is itself saying something very large, which is that he does not approve of this rehabilitation of Rupnik. And I think that this is potentially the situation, um, but we shall see. Uh, another interesting detail uh, about the Synod of Synodality is that um, Father Charles Murr's book, Murder in the 33rd Degree, is going to be released in Italy uh, in time from the Synod of Synodality with a new preface from Roberto de Mattei. And this is obviously very apropos to this whole situation because this has to do with a investigation of the Vatican back in 1978. And so this is uh, a situation where they found this Vatican corruption way back before the pontificate of John Paul II. So this situation has been going on for decades. And unfortunately, under the pontificate of Pope Francis, it appears to be getting quite worse because I mean, if you just talk about sex abuse in and of itself, that has been just a disaster under Pope Francis, unfortunately. Um, so that that is the situation. But uh, as I said, we need to keep peace in our heart and know that God is in control of the church. And all this darkness is really preparing for the glorious triumph of, of Almighty God and the triumph of his holy church, which... We may not see before we die, but our children will see it or our children's children. So that is the promise of Almighty God. So we will be back in just a minute with our guild only portion where we will talk about the latest regarding the JQ. <laughs>